kind of weird. He was like a rounder, less <laughs> pugnacious version of Teddy Roosevelt, and he wasn't a politician. Yeah, and he never went to Panama. Yeah, I've seen his Panama. Ranch. He has a ranch in Hurricane Utah, Utah just outside of um, a man, uh, a plan, big beautiful Panama. ranch, huge truck. This is a Wilford land. Buffalo. Has the same bushy mustache. He was also good, had no mustache, but was good in um, uh, The Thing. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Oh, the wait, the, the remake, the John Carpenter? No, the old oh, one. Hey. Oh, oh, hey. The old one. So oh, after right. you get back from your amazing anniversary trip, congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank 25 you. year anniversaries. Scott Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Woohoo. Uh, we we got to watch The Godfather. Oh, yeah, totally. It's on my list of things to do as soon as I get back. <laughs> we got to start telling current geek people about that, too. Yes, indeed. I'm excited you've about never that. seen the movie, right? Nope. Is that the thing? No, Tom has, I'm sure. Right, Tom? You've seen I it. have, yes. Yeah. More than once. I have not yet, but I will. But on Current Geek, uh, every so often, Scott and I are going to watch the greatest movies of all time and discuss them from a geeky perspective Yeah, as special episodes. A new idea. Have you, seen, have. Have you so, seen Patton? Current sure Geek Film it. Festival. Never seen Patton. Patton would also be a good one for me. You should you should do all the manly movies I missed and see how, like, if you watched it, would your life have changed direction? Like, <laughs> I'm going to be a cowboy. Well, in some cases, like, I finally saw Apocalypse Now, but I would have been, like, two years old when that came out. Man, that movie was weird the first time I watched it. And this is the thing. Um... I didn't watch that movie until much, much later. And so I watched it around the time that uh, Jacob's Ladder came out. And so I thought just like the whole experience was one giant acid trip. And it's like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Jacob's Ladder was We it. are going to watch the top movies of all time as created by averaging the rankings from Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, and the AFI Top 100 films. Yep. Godfather is the first, followed by Casablanca, Citizen Kane, Psycho, Sunset Boulevard, and of course the list goes on. I've only seen of all those you mentioned. This is why this is so embarrassing, and why I really want to do this. I've only seen Psycho in that list. No kidding, Psycho. really. Yeah, never seen Citizen Kane. Uh, I can almost recite Casablanca. It's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, that's your favorite movie, and I've never even seen it. So yeah, oh, this will be great. This is, that one will be fun. I mean, all of these will be fun. Yeah, I, I was like I was a kid who thought if it wasn't in the '80s, it wasn't a movie for me. And I'm different now. <laughs> I would really like to see things I missed. You know, it's I'm sort of the same way, except that it's not the entire decade I don't like. It's just genres. For example, out of the '70s, I kind of like the horror mm -hmm. movie genres that came out in that period of time. In the '60s, I liked the kind of uh, Cold War ish scare so it could be be like a kind of a realistic movie it could be something like uh um manchurian candidate that's manchurian candidate or something like the red planet or you know something you mm -hmm. know of that feeling so generally i like zeitgeist movies movies that kind of evoke the, the popular sentiment of that time oh you're gonna love the next 10 years then oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna oh, get yeah. some zeitgeist movies i can guarantee it there's a lot of Geist to Zeit. <laughs> Hello, my name is Zeit, and this is my co-host, Geist. All right. uh, it's one thirty. shall we? Yes. This All is right. control. 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 Oh, yeah, now you're not talking about movies anymore. <laughs> well, you're the one that brought it up. There you go. You have control, sir. All right, sass, here we go. <laughs> uh, three, two, one. Quality content thrives through the support of those who benefit from its creation. If you gain value from the Daily Tech News Show, consider joining others like me who provide support. Learn how to help at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, August 23rd, 2017. I'm Tom Merritt with Scott Johnson here to be your color commentary to the play-by-play -play of technology news as it parades in front of you each day. I wish I could just circle stuff on the screen Madden style, though. That'd be cool. Like, here's where we saw Samsung move into the left while Apple... Now, if you see DJ Ko, he takes a short stutter step when he says Note 7. Did yeah. you notice that, Scott? Yeah, and then, oh, look, there's an Uber down there in the bottom half of the lane. We're in trouble. Yeah, I, the idea of doing that kind of commentary 
is always entertaining, but I'll take what we have today. It's fine. Look, we try we try to have a good time while talking about the tech news of the day, help you understand the world around you a little better. We're going to talk about the Note 8 announcement, but let's start with a few tech things you should know. Oh, and by the way, our producer Roger Chang is here as well. Hi, Roger. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hi, Scott. Hi. Samsung announced the Galaxy Note 8 available for pre-orders uh, now in the UK tomorrow, August 24th in the US. Uh, it's pretty much now for most people as they listen to this. Arriving September 15th for around $900, depending on the carrier. We're going to have all the details on that later in the show. A few days after the reportedly rumored Apple announcement in September. Hmm. Oh, that it launches on September 15th. Mm -hmm. yeah, 12th, I think, is supposed to be that day. We'll see. French site Mac Forever says it has confirmed with telecom companies that Apple will hold a press event September 12th. There you go. I've just spilled the beans. Uh, that's uh, fortuitous time. I thought it was a very clever transition that you did there. Well done. Uh, the, US, the U.S. Department of Justice says it did not realize the extent of visitor data maintained by DreamHost when it obtained a warrant for 1.3 million IP addresses and all the communications related to a protest website. Who knew? Who knew websites kept all that info? Not us, says the DOJ. It has now narrowed its request. Ah, I'm, I'm, that whole thing's very curious to me. And finally, the San Francisco airport is installing electromagnetic glass. No. Nope. Electrochromic glass. Yes. Second time's the charm. From a company called View Inc., the glass <laughs> that's incorporated for those who think I mean ink. <laughs> the glass adjusts its tint either in <laughs> reaction to sunlight sensors or a programmed working schedule. That's so it'll keep it'll keep things cooler by tinting itself as the sun gets brighter, I suppose. Or if you're like, hey, we need to we need to, you know, tint this up uh, to keep workers focused and stop <laughs> looking out the window, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm actually, I want to see that. I want to see that in action. So may have to make a trip to San Francisco just for that. Here are some more top stories. Google Express is dropping its membership fee. Uh, you won't have to pay to get Google Express. It's also promising delivery in one to three days if a customer reaches a partner store's minimum order. Of course, it's different minimum orders at different stores. But Google Express also integrating with Walmart. So Google and Walmart, kind of two ends of an equation that can compete with Amazon. That means Google Express shoppers can use Walmart's easy reorder feature to buy things by voice on Google Assistant devices, including the Google Home. Walmart plans to add more features like this, including grocery shopping, uh, to work with Google Assistant. It feels like a good move for Google if they're trying to, I don't know, push Amazon to the back burner just a tiny little bit. Well, yeah. I, I mean, Google wants to get into to more of that business with Google Express and Walmart has the expertise. Walmart also would like to have more media presence in, in on devices and they can partner up with Google for that. So it takes two to make Amazon in this case. It does. But in this case, I think it's just a nice agnostic choice so that they can get the good tech and the back end they want. And they're working with a big company like Google and it doesn't you know, if they were to make a deal with Amazon, that would be super weird because Amazon's kind of, you know, enemy number one to every brick and mortar and, you know, web-based selling site in the world. So uh, I think this is probably a smart move. On yeah, I mean, Walmart wants to be Amazon. They just put their voodoo service on Apple TV. <clears throat> and you may think that's odd if, you, if you're if you used to using voodoo to buy things because you can't buy things through the Apple TV. They don't want to give a cut to Apple. But they also, a lot of people don't realize, have a free streaming video service, which puts them not only in competition with Netflix, but also with Amazon. Mm. And one would expect that maybe you will see Voodoo start to make some original programming since that's the hot thing. Well, let's see if that Voodoo is the Voodoo they do so well. Mm. The New York Times has sources who say Apple will begin testing autonomous vehicle technology with a shovel, uh, excuse me, a shuttle on its corporate campus to be called Palo Alto Infinite Loop or Pale. Not sure I like that name, but anyway, uh, the Times piece also claims Bob Mansfield scrapped plans for a full car when he took over the Project Titan. Yeah, Pale doesn't seem like an Apple name, doesn't it? Well, you're gonna ride the Pale over to the other the other campus today. Yeah. Ride the Pale. Um, it, is, it is short and easy to say though, and that's there's something to be said. Did for you that. take the shuttle? No, I live beyond the Pale. <laughs> I. Okay, so this New York Times article is getting a lot of headlines as Apple has given up on making fully autonomous cars and instead is just doing this shuttle. And that's not what the New York Times article says. The New York Times article 
is a very well-written article that talks about how at first there were a lot of competing priorities. At first, Apple thought, well, maybe we'll actually build a car and that at some point they decided that was too complex and they brought in Bob Mansfield, as you said, who kind of tightened up the screws and said, let's work on an autonomous car platform that will run on other cars. Also, they are testing this with the shuttles. They still have those Lexuses registered with the state of California. And according to the New York Times article, it, they're still going to use those out on the streets. So they haven't given up on anything, it doesn't seem like. Now, this reminds me of when everybody said that Google was giving up on glass. And um, they never did. They weren't. They maybe were restructuring or deciding what to do with it. But, you know, like anything, it's more exciting to think that there was a big goof and now they're... Yeah their efforts someplace else. And, but. and they did at one time have the hubris, as Apple does, to think, hey, we could just build our own cars. And they decided against that. I I find that to be a more expected line where you start big and then you adjust as you go on what you think you can achieve versus some kind of failure. Right. Also, this article, uh, if, you're, if you're just glancing at it, it may sound like they're making like a tracked uh, thing. Like it's a... Like oh, a right. No, that's a good point. And it's not. It's like a autonomous vehicle. It is a vehicle that will drive around campus, uh, albeit in this very controlled place. Uh, but it's not like something's on rails like you'd see in, you know, Vegas, the, the yeah, yeah. rail or anything like that. And I think that's, I mean, that's pretty significant. That is an autonomous car that they can test in their own backyard and build from there. So I, for one, am all for the pale outside of the dumb name. And the Times piece implies that it will go between their campuses. They will have more than one. There's the spaceship campus, but there's also a couple of satellite campuses. So it will be on public roads for part of its journeys, uh, it looks like. The International Federation of Robotics reports that robot shipments jumped 27% in China to 90,000 last year. And it estimates that the number will jump in the country again to hit 160,000 by 2019, China makes up about a third of the global total of robot shipments, making it the leading country in new robot installations. So the robot arms and legs and rollers and treadmills race is on. Yeah, well, yes. I mean, I don't know how I should feel about a robot race in terms of uh, who it benefits the most. I think the idea that we're increasing the sales and manufacturing of robotic equipment for other kinds of manufacturing or for whatever they may need me uh, be used for. And people at home are probably picturing, you know, actual robots and they, they are, but you know, we're also talking about auto manufacturing and lots of other kinds of robotic equipment. The fact that China's dominating in that sector is interesting, but also I don't know that we are, I don't know if we as a country, if, if here in the USA, we care that much, uh, not about robotics, but about leading in that area. Like maybe, well, if, if robots end up being way more efficient, uh, then we'll care and we'll want to catch up. I, what's a nicer word for the lazy, <laughs> the lazy assumption. I feel like the, the, you know, the internet tends to make the lazy assumption like, oh, the lazy assumption in both of these would be their robots won't work or uh, the, the, here's another way to undercut paying people. Mm -hmm. And I don't think either of those really hit the nail on the head. I think what, what's happening is China is really allowing its companies to pursue efficiency in this particular area. And it's something that may give them an advantage. It's worth paying attention to. It's also well, not, it's new. Yeah, it's not new in uh, electronics anyway. They've kind of been well, you know, leading I think I mean, part of the assumption is that China just has this huge, deep wellspring of uh, cheap workers, and they don't. In fact, the cost of labor in China is going up, and these are this is an attempt, as, as similar to in the U.S., to basically bring labor costs down by automating a lot of the production. Um, and so it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, like a lot of the jobs that have been reonshored in the U.S. are a lot more automated than the than when they shipped out like 10, 10, 20 years ago. And so they require fewer workers, but they're more automated. So it'll be interesting to see. And, and I think part of the, 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 the big argument is like, you know, who's going to, who's going to reach total automation of production this the quickest, will it be Germany? Will it be, you know, the U S will it be China? Because there's, there's a lot of things that, uh, that are coming into play, both demographics, but also the need to, keep our desire to keep production in their respective countries and don't forget the united states and europe have 
been adding robotics to uh, to their factory lines and, and automating workplaces for a long time. Uh, China may be leading in this because they have more to catch up at, but there is that leapfrog effect where when you're behind and you jump to the front, you get the more advanced current versions of things and it could end up making you a leader so it's worth paying like i said it's worth paying attention to yeah it's like internet going from copper to, to broadband we were slow to do anything or with skipping over desktops to, to smartphones sure same deal you have a little bit of a growth problem if you if you aren't in their position so we'll see what they do hey during gamescom today in a whole different part of the world in cologne germany uh blizzcon or sorry excuse me blizzard showed off a new six minute pixar like animated short that brings all sorts of new life and, I think, potential characters to the Hearthstone universe. I'm very curious about these uh, couple of goblins that are in it. Anyway, they said a series of animated stories and comics were, would uh, soon follow. And for many, and that includes me, this sort of confirms what uh, we think Blizzard's doing right now, which is trying to reach outside the core Hearthstone audience and aim for a more broader player base. Um, in fact, you're already hearing from some of the hardcores saying, oh my gosh, they're trying to kidify my hardcore game. And I think in Blizzard's uh, position, they're like, no, we're trying to expand its appeal to people maybe outside of nerdy CCG players. Maybe we want to talk more to kids. Maybe we want to talk more to moms who've got a little extra time while they're waiting for the kids or whatever the market is they're not currently tapped into. Hearthstone can be for a much broader base. And I, I think that's what they were doing today. It is interesting that the Blizzard announcement at Gamescom uh, got a lot of attention for Overwatch and Hearthstone in large part because of its cinematics. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Sam Sykes, the author on Twitter said, just make movies already, won't you, Blizzard? Is that the first person to express that opinion? I know. Uh, and this, this Pixar-like animated short was really fun, and I play Hearthstone, and it got me excited to go play another game, but it did feel very Pixar-like. It felt very kid-oriented. On the other hand, Hearthstone ain't no hardcore game. I, I know there's hardcore esports around it, but it, it's still a, a it's a card game. Yeah, uh, and and so there's nothing wrong with saying let's let's appeal to the kid in all of us uh, in this fun game. Could not agree more. Um, they're gonna they're gonna be the naysayers who feel like something's being taken from them, but the truth of the matter is, it is kind of a game for everybody. It's a game for people who want to, I don't know, practice being smart, making cool tactical decisions. I don't think that should be limited to a bunch of fantasy nerds. So I'm totally into this. And it was the highlight of the com. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of their presentation was a little empty. They didn't have much to say that wasn't already known for Heroes of the Storm, World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, and Overwatch. Everything that was new outside of these cinematics, we already knew about uh, from a few days ago or a week ago or more. And uh, so really all we got was a couple of movies. That being said, these guys are masters at making animated shorts and why they don't just go ahead and make a series. I don't know, but they did say about these characters and they're introducing in Hearthstone. They plan a series of additional shorts and comics to sort of flesh out stories, let you know who those characters are, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So those two goblins I'm interested in, I'm going to mm. learn a lot more about. And it's an, it's just an interesting turn for, for the little game that could. Was that Archmage Antonidas, the wizard guy? Was that who that was supposed, supposed to be? I'm not 100% sure okay. on that. Because a lot yeah. of the characters, the word on the ground is that they're not tied to actual characters. They're to just actual characters. Okay. It was just a wizardy guy. Yeah. I'm like the two-headed ogre. He looked like Cho'Gall, but he's not. But maybe not. Uh, All right. Anyway, it, it's, it's, it is a delightful Disney-esque, uh, awesome piece of work with original music and incredible references. And it's just really well done. So if you haven't seen it, uh, let the little kid inside you come out and go watch it. Israel's Flytrex has partnered with Iceland's AHA. AHA does on-demand delivery. And now AHA will do on-demand delivery by hexacopter in Reykjavik. Flytrex worked with local regulators and developed the network that the delivery system runs on. So the back-end network, you know, the internet network. An AHA employee will have to load the delivery onto a DJI Matrice 600. And it will then fly across the Bay of the North Atlantic Ocean where another delivery person will unload it and take it the rest of the way. So it's not yet to your home. However, this still saves the half hour or more drive that a normal delivery driver would have to make around the bay. The hexacopter can carry up to three kilograms. That's good for a hamburger or beer or some sushi. And it can go up to 10 kilometers, only has to go a couple of kilometers across the bay. AHA plans to start with about 20 deliveries a day, and it hopes to expand to multiple routes and eventually 
include those home deliveries. Do you think this is Reykjavik going, man, we sure could use more hand-delivered burgers, or is this an, an experiment? Like the no, I mean, I think this is AHA seeing a, a publicity opportunity. They're calling themselves the first drone delivery service. They're not. Rwanda beat them to it. Singapore has some. Amazon's done some in the UK. There's some in Australia. There's lots of delivery going on with drones. But I think they saw the opportunity to say, hey, we'll get a splash of publicity and we'll actually solve a problem, which is if we need to deliver across that bay, that's that's a long drive and we could shorten our delivery time practically by doing this. I mean, even if it's not drone delivery to the door, the fact that it's going to go straight across the water is going to save them a bunch of time. Yeah, this feels like we're on the verge of this becoming normal and everywhere. It's, it's how it's starting to feel because everyone every once in a while we get a story on the show and it's sometimes on a Wednesday, which makes me think it's happening even more than I think. And we are not that far from this is no longer a story. This is just normal, especially for remote areas and more and more popular. Yeah populated areas and i am all for it i love this idea of getting my stuff this way and i don't know if it's because of the feet dragging of the faa with commercial drones that has somewhat been addressed at this point but if you look at these things they're happening in switzerland in rwanda in australia as i mentioned earlier right they're they're not happening in the united states so this is a worldwide phenomenon in the truest sense we are worried about flying things we don't control to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, folks, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. You can get it as a podcast on the Amazon Echo or uh, through the Anchor app at anchor.fm. And that, my friends, is a look at the headlines. Hey, uh, Samsung announced the Galaxy Note 8. Did I mention that at the beginning of the show? I sure did. Uh, here's some more details. It has a 6.3-inch AMOLED screen, 2960 by 1440 resolution, so HD+. Curved edges. They call it an infinity screen, but the bezels are still there at the top and the bottom. It's bezel-less on the side. Uh, specs are as you would expect. Snapdragon 835 or Exynos 8895 internationally. IP68 water resistance still there, but they bumped up the RAM to 6 gigabytes. There's a 3300 milliamp hour battery. That's a little smaller than the Galaxy S. Uh, but remember, batteries are a <laughs> very sensitive uh, thing, and they, they want to play it a little conservative. It's still a, a beefy battery. Has a dual rear wide angle and telephoto camera, so that it has dual cameras like the iPhone. Ships with Android 711 Nougat uh, and voice assistant Bixby. So it's the first non-Galaxy S to have Bixby, but it's not going to get Oreo quite yet. It'll come. App Pair is a feature that'll let you create a shortcut, so you can launch two apps at once side by side just by clicking on the edge. Edge. comes in midnight black orchid gray maple gold and deep sea blue once again those colors black gray gold and blue <laughs> pre-orders begin august 24th like i said uh or uh, they're on right now in the uk and the note 8 arrives on september 15th pricing varies by carrier uh it's between 930 and 960 dollars it looks like here in the u.s it's 869 pounds in the uk from what you've learned from their from what they've released and what we've seen in the SARS Technica article and of course everything that's all around the place. Do you feel like, I, I feel like after reading through most of these articles, they're all kind of not talking about the battery thing. And I know we've talked it to death and that batteries you know, burned in the previous generation and it was a huge snafu and they're moving on past that. But uh, I, I guess I thought some people would at least mention it and yeah. nobody talking about it really. the virgin and the engadget both briefly mentioned uh the battery issues uh, being in the past uh that they they talked about and samsung hit it head on they started the announcement by looking at the history of the note and showing you know socially shared videos of people the first time they got a note and doing some unboxings and the note three and the note four and i was like wow this is risky you're going to go in the history of the note are you sure you want to do this samsung and they didn't flinch they went right to the note seven and they very cleverly in my opinion showed fans being disappointed like mm -hmm. oh man i'm gonna have to give my note seven back oh this is so bad and then transitioned into we're still with you samsung mistakes happen you know, we can't wait for our, for for you to fix this. And it was I thought it was pretty well done not to shy away from the fact that they screwed up, but at the same time making it sound like but people are willing to give us the benefit of the doubt and here we are with the new Note 8 and I think that is one of the reasons you're not seeing people dig into this is Samsung took it on the chin themselves in this. 
Yeah, no, I, I think I, I think I also agree with that's the right way to do it. Do you, um, I know this happens with every big flagship phone, but I always am just slightly bothered when it's not a, a, a Google branded phone that they're not starting with um, the latest with Oreo. They're going with Nougat. And I think that's just an accident of timing. I mean, maybe Google and Samsung could have cooperated a little better here, but Android Oreo just got announced on Monday uh, and started the rollout process. It's they're gonna get it pretty quick, but they they just couldn't promise it. Yeah. Well, it's an immensely popular phone. I'm really excited for fans of of this device. They're gonna finally get the generation they deserve. Last generation uh, with some definite improvements anyway. Aside from all you know, the fact that it shouldn't burn. Um, yeah, I'd be curious if if uh, organizations like the TSA or others are are even a little fishy about a new Samsung phone. I don't know how that stuff works. Do they I mean, stuff? Galaxy S. The Galaxy S's haven't had any problems. I doubt it. Sure. I, I doubt there'll be any issue with it. That I, you don't hear those announcements anymore. Uh, that was that was only last year. It hasn't even been a year yet yeah. uh, since that happened. Sure. Well, it looks like a good phone. I, I, I would like it. And we don't know how soon they get nougat, but we just know it's coming. Yeah, they'll get it. Uh, I, I'm curious if they'll get it by the 15th, even if if that'll be available on the you know the day you open up your box. Uh, I I don't think that's impossible. They're not saying anything about that. It does some cool other things. Takes notes uh, with the S Pen as soon as you remove it. Pins notes to the screen. It can translate more text by hovering. That's something it could do last time. If there's a knock on the Note 8, it's that it's not a huge leap from what the Note 7 should have been. Uh, other than you know that higher resolution screen uh, and those curved edges, there's not a lot of compelling new things in here. But it's a decent phone, an and app, it's bigger. It's six point three inches. An app pair is a Samsung thing, so uh, not not tied to the OS in terms of you know it's not part mm -hmm. of it necessarily. I'm very curious about that and mm -hmm. trying to figure out my head use cases for launching two apps i assume it would be like well one's my tasks thing that i prefer over the built-in stuff and the other is my calendar that i prefer over google's or whatever and being able to see those two things simultaneously or have them uh, running at the same time more quickly than running them separately i guess seems cool really curious about that in action though and i'm i'm sure you'll get feedback on that but i'm really curious what people use app pair for yeah i uh, there's a couple other things that are happening as well here. Uh, the Note 8 buyers in the U.S. will get 60 days free Samsung premium care service. That's in partnership with a company called Hello Tech that will visit you if you have a problem. That's kind of cool. You get 60 days free of that. I think it's like 11.95 a month, so it's kind of pricey after the first 60 days. Uh, there's also a bunch of bundles. You can get a free Samsung Gear 360 camera in some cases, or a 128 gigabyte micro SD card and a wireless charging pad. And that's the other thing. Don't forget the Note 8 has wireless charging as well. Uh, optical image stabilization in both those dual cameras and 10x digital zoom. Uh, and Samsung Mobile President DJ Ko told CNBC at, at the event that a Samsung smart speaker would be launching soon. Uh, and that's not particular to the Note, but that would likely have Bixby, the, the voice assistant, in it as well, which would be another product to have that. Yep, another home voice assistant with another name that I Just what you wanted. Try to get excited about. I mean, whatever. I don't want to be, I don't want to poo-poo this out of the gate because... Just because there's more competition, I think that's really good. We're gonna we're gonna really suss out some you know features, and people are gonna really either stand above the rest or uh, whatever. It's not like you know Amazon can just rest on their laurels for a long time, and I like that. Um, just wondering what they're gonna bring to the table specifically. I hope it's a very open platform, very you know Internet of Things friendly, um, lots of protocol for third party apps to run, that sort of stuff. Uh, if that's the case, who knows? Samsung could be the next big voice assistant in the market. And by the way, Big Jim uh, posting in our chat room right now, the Federal Trade Commission in the U.S. has approved the Amazon Whole Foods acquisition. Earlier today, Whole Foods Board approved that acquisition. That's not a surprise, uh, but the FTC was conducting an investigation to gauge whether the merger would decrease competition. Seems like they found out it's fine. Uh, it's supposed to close in the second half of this year, but if things keep going like this, you might see Amazon own in Whole Foods a little earlier than people expected. Sure, which, by the way, adds a whole new layer of functionality to their own Amazon Echo. So very much looking forward to that. Although I don't like paying those prices. So what I hope comes from that uh, purchase isn't just business as usual at Whole Foods. I think they're ripping everybody off all the time. I would rather they buy somebody cool like, um, uh, uh, what's his name? What if they just lower the prices? 
Yeah, okay, that too. <laughs> You're talking about Trader Joe's or something? Yeah, Trader Joe's. But yeah. is it possible they could see a lowering of prices as an anti- Oh, yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Amazon loves to have razor-thin margins. So they could come in and just subsidize Whole Foods, which yeah. would be I'll bet, I'll a bet what very crazy thing to happen could, to the grocery market. I could be totally wrong, but I'll bet they. this is what they end up doing. I'll bet they have, maybe they already do, this is going to be embarrassing because I'm saying it, but they should have some sort of prime rewards deal tied into people's prime accounts that they already have. So when I go in there, instead of like my Smith's card that I use or my Harmon's one or whatever, uh, they just see that I'm an Amazon Prime member and I uh, uh -huh. something discount on everything I buy. I think that was yeah, as part of Amazon Prime. Yeah, that would that would be uh, that would be cruel. They leave Whole Foods prices as they are unless you're an Amazon Prime member. Ouch. Yo, ouch. Uh, one last thing, going back to the Note that I wanted to mention, if you were a Note Seven owner. Uh, Samsung is giving a trade-in program for your current phone. Remember, they replaced the Note 7s with other Samsung phones and other phones. And you can now take your current phone that you replaced your Note 7 with and trade it in for a Note 8 uh, up to $425 off. So you don't now, get a free Note 8, but you get a discount. What if you're a person who hung on to the 7 and didn't do the recall? Can you turn yours in? You should no, be. it's too late, dude. Yeah. yeah. You should you 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 should uh, responsibly dispose of that is what you should do or at least the battery. All right, I just know there's somebody, somebody out there. Oh, there's there's somebody. Yeah, the majority of them got turned in though. They were like, "You're not taking my phone out of my cold dead hand." Well, some people are like, "I want a collector's item." Ha ha ha. Oh, good point. Just yeah. keep that battery out of the, <laughs> the Note Seven if that's what you're doing. Hey, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and join in the fun at our Facebook group, facebookcom groups slash show. We got some emails we're going to read before we get out of here. Scott, you want to read the first one? Sure. Hi, Tom. Says this email from Ali Smith, aka Forty Thieves. Not sure if this is consumer friendly enough to make it to DTNS, but as a web developer, this is pretty exciting. Mozilla has been working on an experimental browser called Servo. Tom Servo, not really. That is designed to be much faster for the last couple of years. Uh, let's see. They They've even, been working on the last couple of years, I guess. Right, right, right. They've even invented a new programming language they call Rust that it uses. I like that as well. The experiment seems to have paid off, and so now they have slowly been moving those parts into Firefox itself. One of these parts is called Stylo, which brings parallelism and multi-core support to CSS, the language that is used to style the web. They are claiming two to four uh, times speed up over the Firefox currently. Here's an excellent article about it that gave us a link. Tom will put that in the show notes. It's aimed at web developers, so it has a bit of technical jargon, but I think it's pretty good at explaining the concepts. At the moment, it's only shipping in Firefox nightly, and you have to enable an experimental flag, but it should be rolling out over the next few months. To everyone, I'm excited to see that browsers hadn't stopped optimizing and improving browsers, and I think there's going to be another noticeable jump in web performance, much like when Chrome was released. Thanks, Allie. Yeah, uh, that's exciting. I haven't touched I haven't touched Firefox in a while, and I wouldn't mind having a reason to. Give me an excuse. Yeah, I use it from time to time, uh, and it is bit it has historically been a CPU hog, but so is Chrome. Uh, so any any browser that fixes that is going to be very welcome in my book. Uh, and anonymous person who knows about these things wrote in and said, Netflix negotiated with many ISPs, cable companies, etc., as the network responsible for 30 plus percent of your traffic, saying that this makes them worthy of putting a box in the network, usually at zero cost. We've talked about this on the show before. Netflix offered, hey, we'll, we'll put a box full of our content in your house so that you can save on bandwidth transfer costs, etc. Well, our anonymous writer says, if Disney at all make their own networks, you know, because they're buying BamTech, they are going to force their way into doing the same, possibly even suing some networks that don't allow this. This isn't 100% fully formed thought, but this splitting of everyone in their own network could make all video on the internet worse as networks would be a lot less likely to give everyone free power and co-location for a CDN box as if everybody does it, it would cost a ton. Also, I can see some networks trying to bundle space for their CDN box along with a lower price for channel carriage on the cable company that runs that network, <laughs> meaning we will charge Verizon Fios less to carry ESPN if they let us colo CDNs for Disney stuff in every city. This could get really hairy. Yeah, if it's just Netflix, this is fine. It's an interesting idea, and it makes kind of some sense. But if everybody does this, yeah, Hulu and every, I like everybody with all their CBS All Access, whoever... This gets real weird, I think. I think Annan's right. 
Good job, Anonymous. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah. uh, I, them Anna, or Anna. Hey, I, Anna. I like that, though. We're, we could, like They used to call them Anonymous Cowards on Slashdot. We'll just call them Anon. <laughs> thank you, Ann, for writing in. Non. Ann Non. And uh, thank you, Scott Nonson, for yeah. writing in as well. I'd be on the show. What's going on these days? Very Nonson. So I'm about to take a little anniversary trip and uh, not be here for a while. But for those of you who like to watch people play video games on Twitch, and if you think I'd be interesting to watch in that uh, context, then I have good news for you. Every day at 4 o'clock, Monday through Thursday, most days, uh, I am doing a stream called Frog Pants Plays. And you can find it over at frogpants.tv. Uh, that'll be happening, in fact, this afternoon in about an hour. So if you're still around and you want to just catch some nice casual uh, visions of me playing Mad Max, the video game, well, I got good news for you because that's where I'll be. So check that out. All other uh, things can be found at frogpants.com and, of course, on Twitter at Scott Johnson. And thanks for having me on, as always. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, folks, uh, we could not do this show without your support. Big thanks to everybody who already supports us, gives a little value back for the value they get from the show at patreon.com slash DTNS. Our goal is always every month to get at least one more patron than we had last month. We're four off the pace right now. So if five of you uh, who aren't supporting the show could jump in and help us out right now, that that would put us over the goal. And we have some very cool milestones coming in September. There's some cool new stuff in the works that you're going to want to know about. So if you haven't supported us already, get over there to patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC at alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv. Our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. And we'll be back tomorrow with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. Is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> and scene. Bean. Good show. What should we call it? Almost on the dot. Almost. So dot adjacent. Dot, dot adjacent. Uh, wall oogle or goo marked? Goomart. Walugal. Apple Apple kicks the pail down the road. Mm. Pails, rails, and automobiles. <laughs> That's pretty good. The note this note should not self-destruct. <laughs> D-O-J. Um, you know, O is uh, uh Beyond the Pale, Tom Lives Beyond the Pale, Robot Races On, Huffcore Cinematics. Oh, Hearthcore, Healthcore. Ah, I kind of like it to you shorts. I kind I like the the this note will not self destruct because it's literally the language of a Mission Impossible episode or something. It's also a little mean the, to, and focuses a little too much on the seven. But the note eight starts out with a bang. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's fine. It's fine. Starts out just note a little. Note the lack of Oreos in this galaxy. Uh, Hearthstone ain't no hardcore game. Air Burgers, the no Oreo. Prime Foods. Um. Thank you, Anon. 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 I actually know someone named that. That's why it didn't seem weird. We'll just call him Ann. Ann wrote. Every time we get anonymous, we'll just say Ann writes in with the following. Occam's laser. L <laughs> A Z O R, like lazy. Nice. Blizzard gives it to you in the shorts. You'll have your nougat and like it. Nougat. You can have nougat. How can you have any pudding? <laughs> don't eat your meat. How can you have any multitasking if you don't get your Oreo? <laughs> It's not multitasking. Coming to the new The Wall remake. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. Android right The now, Wall. What do you want to go to? Right now, the top is, by the way, here's Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's that's what I want to do. Yep. Point out my horrible memory. But because you had it in the lineup, I remembered. That's why I remembered, because I saw it. I was like, oh, crap. Yep. I like Pails, Rails, and Automobiles. 
Yeah, that yeah, it sounds like a uh, John Candy, um, yeah. Steve Martin movie. I'm assuming that's exactly what it's meant to sound like. Yeah, that's the reference. Oh, I got more of this on my phone. What? Oh, the magnetic putty? Yeah, just while I'm talking here. Is it like magnetic putty in your hands? <laughs> kind of. And that's the second time I made that joke, I know, but I just can't stop myself. What's that word you said earlier? It's... I had a... Poop emoji? No. <laughs> No, what the two materials adhering to each other. Oh, covalent bond? Yeah, there's a covalent bond problem. Oh, my name is Bond, covalent. <laughs> no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to be covalent. <laughs> I expect you to, to adhere to a rubber case. <laughs> I expect you to dye this shirt Damn it. with your putty. That is really weird. I feel like there's some science here, but I don't care. It could be ionic. Well, there is science there. It just... It might just be sticky. It might just be boring science. Weird science. Do you, Not as do cool you? As all this eclipse talk? All right. Eclipse. I want to admit something, and I have admitted this to Doctor Kihi. This is no. This is no secret. I am jealous of this week in science theme song. Now, oh. I, I love our theme song. Don't get me wrong. It's a great theme song. I know not everybody loves, it, but I love it. I no, I got no quibble with our theme song, but I do am jealous of words because the words of this week in science, yeah, the lyrics are pretty great. So I aim to do something about it. Oh, oh, hey. Why don't you just saying, I'm just saying emails with Andrew Allen may have been exchanged. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good one to contact. I don't know if they'll have lyrics, though. I may still need to, to go after the lyricist. So if you if you... If you out there are a lyricist, be thinking. I'm trying to think if I know anyone. Remember what I you did. should do is kind of dead mouse it. So it's you make you sample out your saying daily tech news show or whatever you want the the main lyrics to be. And you, you know who that, do like you know who a, does that? Uh, Eric Van Skyhawk does that. Yeah. He did that. For like a, one of my TMS is like this one. <laughs> I mean, it's not my voice, but, you know, it's got kind of a EDM quality to it. That's what you need to Lazy yeah. assumptions kill, fun busted every day. <laughs> yeah, no, bad. if you're going to do that, no, no. If you're going to do that, you should do it like death metal. So you need to do your Beth Cookie Monster scream into the mic. Sample that. I think that's why just, I need a jazzier version to be able to yeah. come up with lyrics for. Yeah, unless you scream it like like death metal style. Yeah, because what I did there is not acceptable. <laughs> just now. Just do. My Tom Aaron and I got all the daily tech news. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not what we're looking for. <laughs> no, but see, that would be great because it can it contrasts so much with the show. People are expecting like. Like headbangers ball and really what they're gonna get is is uh, something that makes your skin crawl <laughs> you up at night <laughs> something that makes you cringe and say I is just, that I'm just giving you some, some suggestions i mean i'm not telling you to go war or anything like that but yes listen uh lyrics are cool singing is cool if you're good at singing and i am not holding myself as an example of that oh what if you get in, uh, like a high school acapella group? Uh, maybe. Depends on the high school. <laughs> yeah. Go down. Hey, Tom, go down to the high school and just hang around. No one will think anything's weird. Yeah, no. No, I'm sure. I'm sure it'd be fine. No, just talk to all the girls. I'll just explain there. that I'm, you know, I'm just looking for lyricists. <laughs> That's where, no, like, no, I kid you not, all. like back in high school, our choir, our choral group, as well as our orchestra were hired out for events for like, weddings or is that the style uh, we want though roger is that is that the one is that what we're after well you would be the client so uh, you, would, you would say no we the we're the client you you and i are the client no that's what i'm saying <laughs> you are the client you would determine do like, we want acapella is that wow you're really against acapella i'm, sorry, I'm just roger. asking you a question i didn't say whether Maybe. I was against... <laughs> if it's really good why not why not a barbershop quartet all right all right <laughs> Oh, I have answers to why not a barbershop. Not <laughs> oh, yeah, why? Uh, that they're, they're terrible and never do it. 
Oh, I like barbershop like quartets. Barbershop quartets? I like them oh. in the context of, hey, we're in a barbershop and these guys are singing. Isn't that funny? I don't think it's good for like just life. Daily tech news. Oh, that's a terrible See? idea. So it writes bad. itself. That's <laughs> awful. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can get something better for y'all to work with before we start Why don't pursuing you, this. You know what? You can put a little soul into it and get kind of like a Jefferson's theme going on up. I don't want this to turn into American Idol. <laughs> It's the first time I've ever heard you say that. <laughs> I don't want to have to make fun of people. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's not really your gig. Wait, who no. are you making fun of? Who well, you I'm thinking of people submitting bad music. That's all. No. Well, you would make fun of them in private, so that's... it's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would make fun of them in private. No, I would make fun of them in public too. <laughs> no, I know we have some real legit musicians out there, um, and and I, I will give you more to go on once I have more to go on. But uh, I just wanted to strike wanted to it know rich this. in the chat room. Said maybe the new heart theme available. Oh, Christy Cates. Yeah, I should, I, we've been wanting to collaborate. Well, actually, Andrew Allen wants to collaborate too. So uh, yeah, we got lots of we got lots of options. If you need guitars, Bo Schwartz does killer stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. He nice. does a theme on core, and it is epic. It's really, really good. He makes a version for every character in the game, so we can play a different one every week. All right, we got we got options. Well, and again, I really like the DTNS theme song that we have. So, you know. Martin Bell made the opening theme song and, and maybe Martin Bell's got some lyric ideas. Martin, are you listening? <laughs> Martin, are you out there, buddy? Martin, I haven't heard Put some you words into the song that you that we already have. Maybe like a Huey Lewis. Love Huey Lewis. Yeah. You do? Yep. I do. I love Huey Lewis in the news. I think the sports album is one of the best albums ever. And not ironically, I think it's great. I love it. It's fun. I love when it comes on. I am happy revealing. with the daily news. <laughs> That's a weird one to pick. I would have gone with like, uh, uh, got to get back in time. Got to get tech news. Got to get tech. Uh, let's see. No, it doesn't work either. Got a tech in time. I need some new news. I'm taking what we're taking because I'm working for the tech news. It's <laughs> uh, to be Tom. <laughs> Sometimes bad is bad. I love them. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, dear friends, we have come to the end of once again another broadcast day in the DTNS land. Thank you for joining us. We'll begin our broadcast day tomorrow at 6 a.m. from studios located at 318 West Main Avenue in Greenville, Illinois. Our studio to effective link call sign is WLD716. Join us again tomorrow for the very best in radio entertainment. You must have done Woo. that.